Hi everyone, welcome to the Social Traders 2020 Awards. I'm Mike McKinstry, I'm the CEO at Social Traders. I'd like to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which I'm standing here today in Melbourne, the Wurundjeri people, members of the Kulin Nation, and I'd like to pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Now because of COVID this year, we're hosting a digital ceremony to celebrate every category and award winner. From Monday to Friday this week, we'll be announcing two winners at 12 noon daily on our social media channels, that's Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. So we'd love you to come and join us each day at noon if you can, uh, and we'll, we'll live stream these celebrations. But don't worry if you can't, uh, they'll also be posting the winners across the channels and the website. And there'll be a wrap-up video on Friday uh, as a finale to celebrate the highlights and the key achievements of social enterprises, business and government winners across the country. Now, I recently joined Social Traders as the CEO. Um, after 35 years in the corporate sector in the UK, the USA and Australia, for the last five years, I joined the not-for-profit sector for a for-purpose sector as a CEO for GenU. GenU are a large disability services provider who do aged care and employment services nationally. At GenU, we were members of Social Traders and I respected the great work that Social Traders have been doing in the sector for some years now. So there's a lot going on at the moment and there's many great achievements. But I think we all know there's more to be done to build capacity in the supply chains and making the sector sustainable and ongoing. As Social Traders, we've got a couple of key milestones. We've now hit 100 plus uh, business and government members, and we've certified 400 plus social enterprises. Now this year, of course, with COVID, the social enterprise sector took a hit, but we surveyed in June about 96% of social enterprises were still trading, and that's amazing. And 75% of the social enterprises said that they were looking to grow. Now we also want to acknowledge our business and government organization. You are the forward thinking companies that are building social enterprises, spending into your supply chains. Some of the work done by our buyers to promote social procurement and enshrine it in policy is fantastic, so thank you. Now this is really important as we want to make, I guess, social procurement business as usual in the way that we do business together. Particularly so in post-COVID environment, where we mustn't and we can't leave anyone behind, particularly those facing disadvantage. So why do social traders do these awards? Well, from a social trader's point of view, our mission is to support social enterprise and the sector to grow and to support Australians most in need by building social procurement as a business-as-usual practice. And we've had a really impressive calibre of submissions this year. We've had over 70 applications, which is our biggest year yet, and all organisations submitted applications that really demonstrated innovation and adaptation, particularly in this year. So what's next? Well, next up, I'd like to introduce the Honourable Jala Pulford. Uh, Jala is the Minister for Employment, Minister for Innovation, Medical Research, Digital Economy, and, believe it, Minister for Small Business. So she's a busy lady. Uh, and following on from the Minister, our Social Traders Executive Director is Lisa Boothby, who many of you know, and Mark Daniels. They'll also be announcing our award winners at 12 noon daily. And then finally on Friday, the Social Traders Chair, Patricia Edwards, she'll be delivering a special message of thanks to all of our thriving enterprise and business and government members. So once again, a big, huge thank you. Congratulations to all our winners and to the entire community for your achievements. Thank you for all your ongoing support of Social Traders and the sector, uh, both now and in the future. And I hope you enjoy the updates this week and join in celebrating the success of the winners. Thank you very much. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land and to pay my respects to elders, past, present and emerging. It is great to join you all for this exciting event and recognise some inspiring achievements and also the growing impact of social enterprises on our economy. The Andrews Labor Government recognises the importance of building a fair and inclusive economy and the really important role that a thriving social enterprise sector contributes to this goal. This is particularly important in light of the extraordinary and very challenging time that we've all experienced as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Victoria is home to more than 3,500 social enterprises, operating across more than 4,000 locations and contributing an extraordinary $5 billion to our economy each year employing tens of thousands of people. And many of those workers have faced barriers to finding employment. And social enterprises are inclusive employers, supporting some of the most vulnerable people in our society, as well as their important work solving complex social, economic and environmental challenges. We also know that in Victoria, more than 70% of our social enterprises are small businesses in service industries, and they're deeply embedded in their communities and the local economy. Social enterprises make a significant economic contribution and they also help us build a more inclusive economy where diversity and creativity are valued and celebrated. While so many social enterprises have faced disruption this year, 
especially those operating in sectors like hospitality, retail and food service. I've been so inspired and impressed by the resilience and the innovation that's been demonstrated throughout the sector. It's been terrific to see so many social enterprises adapting and rethinking their approach to ensure that their business can continue to survive and indeed in many cases to thrive, but also that their cause is able to continue to be pursued. Today's awards recognise those who are driving that innovation and I'm so excited to see the results in action over coming months. Our government is deeply committed to developing the state's social economy and I'm proud to be part of a government leading the way with Australia's first social enterprise strategy and our social procurement framework. Building on the momentum from our first social enterprise strategy, we're now working on a new strategy to be released next year. Being led by my colleague and friend, our Parliamentary Secretary for Jobs, Jane Garrett. The government has contracted dozens of Aboriginal businesses, social enterprises, and Australian disability enterprises through our social procurement framework. We understand the importance of making sure that everyone has the chance to share in the benefits of the economy and all of these exciting activities that are occurring as part of our economic rebuild. And we also recognise that social enterprises are innovators and entrepreneurs and that innovation is going to be so important for our future economy and for our community's recovery from the impact of the pandemic. These are just some of the reasons we're committed to supporting the work you do in a strong social enterprise sector in Victoria and ensuring that social procurement can deliver social, economic and environmental benefits to our communities for many, many years to come. The creation of new social enterprises and the growth of existing ones will be absolutely vital to Victoria's success our economic success, but also our success as a strong and cohesive society. So about the awards and the winners. This year's Social Traders Award winners showcase the resilience and diversity of our social enterprise community. From a collective of social enterprises delivering food relief to those most in need during the pandemic, or creating employment opportunities for people living with a disability, those that are being acknowledged today have achieved great outcomes across a diverse range of areas. And I'm so impressed by the variety of approaches taken by those that are striving for the same goal, a fairer society and a more inclusive society. And I thank you each for your deep commitment to that. We recognise social enterprises are vital to a thriving social economy and awards like these allow us to highlight but also to celebrate the remarkable work being done in this sector. So congratulations to all of today's winners. Your work continues to inspire and it contributes so much to us all as we build a fairer and more inclusive economy and a fairer and more inclusive society. Thank you and congratulations. It's me great pleasure to announce the 2020 winner for the Social Enterprise of the Year Small Category. This award goes to an enterprise with less than 20 people and it is an enterprise which greatly moved us at last year's conference. The winner of the 2020 Social Enterprise of the Year Small goes to Fruit to Work. A social enterprise simply for me is a business that provides a social purpose and but it's run like any other business but the reason we get up in the morning is for the purpose not for the profit. It is essence the why behind Fruit to Work is to create chances for people who have been impacted by the justice system and allow them to get back into society as contributing members again. We get to see individuals come in at the beginning of their journey and then grow through their journey until they transition from Fruit to Work into full-time employment and other opportunities. It has really changed my life. It always makes me want to do the right thing and stay on the right track because I have people that look up to me. Being a part of a program that help offenders who come out of jail has become an absolute passion of mine. I think the certification process has clearly given us an entry code to infrastructure projects and certainly any government contracts that we've won ask us whether we're social trader certified. So it's certainly given us that credibility. Work gives you a purpose and a passion. It's an amazing, proud moment to be able to say, I've got a job and I'm going to work today. We've actually helped transition 50 people back into society and none of them have re-offended. We've had a zero recidivism rate since we started this whole program. But the highlight for me is every day just seeing 
the lives of the people that we work with change almost in front of your eyes. It's, it's an incredible thing to witness. There's a lot of great things about this job, but just being a part of watching somebody who came from the same background I have, walking in the same shoes that I did, and watching them grow, what, what greater joy. going to announce the award for Social Enterprise of the Year Large, which goes to a social enterprise with 20 or more employees. It gives me great pleasure to announce that this award goes to Nanda Community Enterprises Cooperative. Nanda creates employment for people with disabilities um, and, and from other disadvantaged backgrounds. We have a cafe and catering business, we have a food trailer and we also have a number of gardening contracts that employ people with and without disabilities looking after local parks and a contract at the local shopping centre. Working for the co-op is just fantastic. Waking up every morning um, saying that you've got a job to go to, you go, you go to your job, you put 110% in it. You learn more experiences, you learn things that you have never thought you'd be able to do in your life and you feel like, you've, you feel like you're a better person. We are so proud of the partnership we have with the Nunda Co-op. They have provided such amazing landscaping services. I've never seen landscaping at the centre look as good as it does now. They provide such meticulous care for all of the landscaping on site. They have a greenhouse on site where they repot the plants and they're always changing them over to make sure it's the best outcome on the floor possible. Social traders are a critical organisation in the sector. They help organisations like us link them with customers who not only want to get a job done, but they also want to use that spend to create a job for somebody. The value of an organisation like Nunda Co-op is not only do people have a job, but they're also actively involved in running the organisation. They have a role and a place where they feel like they belong. People become beacons for whole sectors. They might run a social enterprise, but their voice goes way beyond that organisation. In this case, the winner has been the loudest and most consistent voice in the social enterprise sector for the last decade. And as if that wasn't enough, during COVID-19, she led a hospitality initiative in collaboration with 20 other social enterprises in Victoria, providing free meals to those who were doing it tough, all the while socially procuring as much as possible from social enterprises. I'm really excited to announce that the award winner for Social Enterprise Champion of the Year is Rebecca Scott from Street and Moving Feast. We're a social enterprise in Melbourne that works with young people who are having a really tough time. So we provide them with training and employment pathways into the hospitality industry, which is what we work in. For the last couple of years, we've been social traders certified. And what that's really done is allowed us to get a lot of social procurement. For us, it's about supercharging our business by being part of that certification system. Everything we do here at Street is about people, planet and performance. Every decision we make is about those three things and we certainly live and breathe that. And we make sure that within our own social procurement and within our own supply chains, we are doing the ethical work that we want other people to do as well. The other thing that we're doing is working with about 20 other social enterprises to be a great big networked response in the food system. And we think we can make the food system fairer and more regenerative. I think social enterprise has got such an incredible opportunity to really create the communities that we want to be part of. I feel that street has instilled in me a sense of pride in my work. After learning uh, how to teach young people and how to pass on some of that information, it's given hospitality as an industry to me so much more value. 
In another decade's time, I can't wait for Street to be making the city green and edible and rewilded. We're on the very precious lands of the Kulin Nations and this place was a great big food bowl. I would love to see a future food bowl built here and with all of that providing opportunities for young people into training and employment, the possibilities I think are endless for this sector. In every organisation that's doing great work in social procurement, there is an individual champion that has a thick skin, terrific influencing skills, and they're really good at swimming against the tide. And occasionally these people take social procurement beyond their organisation. In this case, the winner is not only working relentlessly to change the way that Australia's oldest bank engages with social enterprise, but she's a vocal advocate for social enterprise in the procurement profession. I'm really pleased to announce that the award winner for Social Procurement Champion of the Year is Joanne Kennett from Westpac. There are many benefits from buying from social enterprises. These have been well documented in terms of diversity and the creativity that these organisations can bring. I've been working with the procurement teams to include social enterprises and Indigenous owned businesses into our category plans. What that means is rather than trying to slot them in when we have a tender, we can look ahead and consider them much earlier in the process. One of the most important things about buying from social enterprises is the touch of humanity it can bring to the procurement process. Green Collect team is a group of really passionate, dedicated staff. Our workplace is made up of people who may have faced homelessness or people who've come to Australia as refugees. We set out to do something that was good for people and good for the planet. With every dollar that we're able to spend with social enterprises, that's taking that profit that would have otherwise gone to other organisations to being used for purpose for better social and better environmental outcomes. Social Traders provides tailored support and expertise to Westpac to be able to certify organisations, to be able to enable us to understand who those organisations are that would be able to help us and partner with us and be able to make sure that we've got integrity in that process. Organisations, when considering buying from social enterprises, should look at this as a long-term commitment. Work out ways that you can build these organisations into your operational spend, and therefore they'll have a continuing stream of revenue, which will help them grow and prosper. The Social Procurement Partnership of the Year Award goes to a partnership between a social traders business or government member and a certified social enterprise. In this award we are looking for a combination of collaboration, creativity and advocacy. The award for 2020 Social Procurement Partnership of the Year goes to AbilityWorks Australia and Transurban. At the start, my concern was that I was not able to do this work, but very quickly I realised I am capable. This is achievable for me. I feel very respected here, very valued. AbilityWorks focus on people with moderate to complex support needs. We get people into work by breaking jobs down into their component parts. Uh, individuals are aligned with a component that is within their capability or skill set and the end outcome is commercially competitive products of high quality. 
Our initial relationship with AbilityWorks started all the way back in 2011, but really it's come a long way since then. And we've invested heavily in not just buying directly from AbilityWorks, but providing guidance and support under our shared value supply development model to help them pivot and succeed in directly supplying the infrastructure construction market with a number of new service lines and products. Creating shared value has involved continuous engagement, understanding and a focus from all of our partners to develop mutually valued opportunities. And this partnership would simply not have been possible without the combined support of the Oricon Group, Apricot Consulting and RMIT University. Social Traders have been an important partner for this project from the very beginning. They have not only helped AbilityWorks find and explore new customers, they've also played a critical role in helping the team conduct strategic market research in the advocacy of social enterprise right across the community. We could not be prouder of the achievements of the AbilityWorks team and we hope that it will inspire even more people to participate in this kind of work in the future. Social Procurement Buyer of the Year for 2020 goes to a Social Traders Business or Government Buyer member that has shown a real commitment to social procurement, both in terms of the amount and commitment to spend, but also the diversity of its spend and the diversity of its practices to accommodate social procurement. The 2020 award for Social Procurement Buyer of the Year goes to CPB Contractors. As a company, we set ourselves a target last year of 2% procurement spend, and with that, we have been able to measure what our business units are doing as well as our projects. At a flick of a button, we can actually see what our um, Indigenous and social procurement spend is at any time. CPB are championing the way forward in corporate social responsibilities. What gets measured gets done and so implementing these targets shines light on the requirements and ensures accountability. We have a fantastic partnership on the project with a social enterprise called CleanForce, providing us with cleaning services across the entire project, so not only our corporate offices along the project, they also clean our crib shed facilities on the construction sites. Through this project we currently have 14 people employed directly uh, with CPB, but also within their subcontractors on the project. We're a not-for-profit. Uh, we're a disability enterprise, but we're not asking for a handout. What we're asking for is an opportunity. When we engage with social traders, we know that authentically that we are working with a certified enterprise. We can put our hand on our heart and know that that's what we're doing. And we know effectively by engaging a social enterprise, we are having an impact on not just one person's life, but many people's lives uh, behind the scenes. Spender Award is recognition of the business and government member that spent the most with social enterprises in a 12 month period. This organisation started working with us in 2016 and it's fair to say that the longer they have been a member, the more engaged they've become and in turn the more they've spent with social enterprise. They've also become great advocates for social enterprise and have supported social enterprises in ways that have allowed social enterprises to come into their supply chain. The winner of the Big Spender Award is one of Australia's largest construction companies, the John Holland Group. I think it's really exciting time for the construction industry. We have massive procurement opportunities on our projects, particularly our major projects around the country. It's really important to us that we're making a social difference in the communities in which we operate. 
I have the privilege of working in a role that allows me to see firsthand the positive impact these opportunities have on individual lives. We're delivering a social value above and beyond the value of what we're buying. So we need to consider not only price, quality and risk in our evaluation, we now also need to consider the social and environmental outcomes our investment makes. From creating training and employment opportunities and addressing complex local and national challenges like systemic disadvantage to promoting a more diverse and inclusive culture, an environment that mirrors our society today. Social procurement really does change a team dynamic. If you can talk to your team about that social impact that it's having, it just changes people's mindsets. We are a purpose-led organisation. We believe in ethical and sustainable work practices and I really do think that resonates with the future generation of workers. Social traders have really supported us in our processes by helping us connect to social enterprises that are relevant to our business and that we can include in our supply chain. John Holland is really looking to expand what we do in the social enterprise space. Our responsibility to create a social change is always going to be there and we'll always look for opportunities to, to lead the way. I'm here to announce the winner of the Game Changer of the Year Award. Social Traders has been an active participant in the creation of the social procurement movement in Australia. And we've been witness to those things that have really changed social procurement. And without doubt, the greatest influence in the social procurement landscape has been the Victorian social procurement framework. It's impactful, it's iconic, and it is changing procurement in Victoria and beyond. Behind this great policy is a great group of people who have taken on the role of implementing social procurement across 270 agencies and they've done a magnificent job. The winner of the Game Changer Award is the Victorian State Government. Each year, the Victorian Government spends around $32 billion on goods, services and construction making government procurement one of the biggest drivers in the Victorian economy. In September 2018, the government introduced a social procurement framework to leverage this everyday procurement spend, as well as its enormous forward construction pipeline, and to deliver social and sustainable outcomes that would benefit the entire Victorian community, the economy and the environment. In implementing the framework, we focused in the first instance on the large core departments and over the last 18 months have now rolled that framework out across 275 government agencies. One of the key things that we do to support the growth of social procurement is verify that enterprises are genuine and legitimate and generate impact. Certification is really critical. It's really important to make it as streamlined and easy as possible for everyone in the supply chain to not only be able to find social enterprises, but also to know that they're dealing with legitimate social enterprises that are delivering real impact. The objective of the framework was for government to leverage its everyday buying power to generate social value. The government achieves this through a range of outcomes that it is pursuing under the framework. What's been achieved in the last two to two and a half years is quite extraordinary, but there's a lot more to be done. Government spending is a major part of the economy there's a real opportunity now to drive that spending even harder, to create more inclusive social and sustainable outcomes, really drive public value and provide targeted opportunities where they're needed most. Yeah, I almost feel like the social procurement framework has been built for this challenge. Hi, Patricia Edwards here, and I'm delighted to be speaking to you as Chair of Social Traders. We are recording this message on the lands of the Wurundjeri Woolwurrung people, and I wish to acknowledge them as the traditional owners. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. For many years, Social Traders has hosted this very special award ceremony that brings together the best of the sector and celebrates the significant contribution of this thriving community. This year, the awards hold even more significance as we reflect and celebrate the resilience, the agility, the optimism 
and the determination of people who see social enterprise as much more than just a business. It's an instrument of change, creating amazing social impact, jobs, training, community engagement, additional revenue, and much more about hope. Being a part of a program that help offenders who come out of jail has become an absolute passion of mine. The value of an organisation like Nunda Co-op is not only do people have a job, but they're also actively involved in running the organisation. We're a social enterprise in Melbourne that works with young people who are having a really tough time. The possibilities, I think, are endless for this sector. There are many benefits from buying from social enterprises. Work out ways that you can build these organisations into your operational spend and therefore they'll have a continual stream of revenue which will help them grow and prosper. CPB are championing the way forward in corporate social responsibilities. We are a purpose-led organisation. We believe in ethical and sustainable work practices and I really do think that resonates with the future generation of workers. Government spending is a major part of the economy. There's a real opportunity now to drive that spending even harder to create more, more inclusive, social and sustainable outcomes. A big huge thank you, congratulations to all our winners and to the entire community for your achievements. Thank you for all your ongoing support of social traders in the sector, both now and in the future. For us at Social Traders, we remain absolutely focused on the social procurement marketplace that delivers jobs and economic activity. The fact that the sector has been able to survive and thrive through COVID-19 and emerge with growth and scale is outstanding. To think that the social enterprise sector as we identify has been awarded almost quarter of a billion dollars in contracts with work across government and private sector buyers and created more than 1,600 jobs for disadvantaged people, as well as a range of other social and community benefits, is outstanding. As we look to the future, job creation is now top of mind, and we are determined that social traders will be a significant voice in the social procurement and policy settings that we know will help more people in work through social enterprise. To do that, we welcome and thank the Victorian Government for their vision, focus and long-term commitment to our work. We thank the New South Wales Government for their very bold announcements in recent months. And to the Queensland and South Australia Governments, we are here to support you. To all of our visionary funders, without you, we would not be here. Thank you. And importantly, to our team at Social Traders, another incredible year full of change that has tested the team in many, many ways. On behalf of the board, we thank every one of you. And finishing on a high with our new Chief Executive Officer, Mike McKinstry, welcome. We are very proud to have you as our new leader, already making your mark on a very, very bright future for social traders. And now it's my great honour to introduce a very special Celebrating the Sector video. And may I sign off by saying, here's to us being together in 2021. Thank you. 2020. Year of uh, unsettling emotions. Hard. Unpredictable. When COVID-19 hit, the IPA spirit swung into action. What we've really done in this pandemic is do quite a rapid pivot to be working with a whole heap of other social enterprises. It's great to get up to go to work, for routine, to, for, for socialising, even to feel a little bit important and needed. It's a movement for a better life. I'm working for making the world a better place. This work has felt like a balm um, on some otherwise challenging times. By offering people a, a chance to be themselves, chance to be responsible, to do good work, to do hard work. People from real life that are changing the world step by step. How do we have more social impact um, in everything we do? We're being entrepreneurial and creative and, and optimistic about kind of new opportunities we create as well. Because it feels like we're doing things that matter.